Welcome to my review of the Hella GT and Harding knives. Two very pretty knives from the bosom of mountains and fjords. Sorry, fjords. That would be Norway. I would like to start off this review with a few apologies for pronunciations and past reviews. So I'm sorry that you had a problem with them. I'm sorry you didn't like the way I said Fall Niven. I should have watched Survival Lily's video first. Hearing the Austrian pronunciation of a Swedish word sounds legit enough for me. Like Peter Felk from Columb O, the pivot point of your leg, and my least favorite diagram. Felk Niven. And sorry for saying Veris Talika. I should have read it on the website. It's pronounced, where's the liquor? And while I'm at it, I'd also like to apologize for something a while back to the residents and amateur Midwestern linguists in and around the greater St. Louis metro area for the pronunciation of Shoto. It's Shoto. 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 Hmm. So long as they apologize to the French for half the street names in the city, I shouldn't have to issue a secondary one. So from the bottom of my heart, I'm hella sorry. I think I'm caught up for a week or two until I once again betray someone's favorite cultural heritage brand by butchering the pronunciation. So the Harding and GT are both gorgeous knives, but the Harding being a slightly smaller hunting knife and the GT being bigger, but still beautiful in its own way. But before I take up the next eight to 10 minutes of your valuable porn watching time, depending on how verbose I plan on being today, let's look at the dimensions of both knives, like the overall length and weight. Opposite of sands and sands sheaths. I hope that wasn't confusing. Blade length, cutting edge. Can't wait to completely screw up the mirror polish on crafting of the bushes. The Harding is a loner from a subscriber, so it's sharp but used like me. Handle size and grip area. And I'm not sure if you knew or not, but Curly Birch is the Tamascus of the wool and fedora crowd. Spine thickness, handle thickness. Of course, no behind the edge on the Scandinavian grinds, but I didn't have to tell you that, did I? I guess I, I just did. Tallnesses. I'm sure I'll screw up a measurement somewhere. I did last week on the Aranyak Chopper review. So the GT and the Harding are two nice fixed blades from Hella's lineup, the Harding being a mid three incher and the GT being a mid four incher. I have an unspoken code up until this point, I guess where I spaketh it. For folding knives, I like something under four inches and fixed blades over four inches. It doesn't mean I don't like folders over and fixed under four or that they should suck it, but it comes down to a basic requirement. A good functional folder for me needs to fit in a pocket and still be long enough to cut food. I value compactness and I don't buy into the hard use meme. Although on all of my knives, the first place to fail is usually the spine, right? Is that how it is with you? On the other hand, a good fixed blade needs to be able to do some light chopping if need be. So it's a flexible rule and it may not make sense for your needs, but it does for my made up ones. Both the Hella and Harding are made from Hella's triple laminate steel, a carbon steel core interior that's tougher and two layers of corrosion resistant exterior layers to scratch up. Hella says they use more expensive steel than other knife brands because they never compromise on quality and apparently unaware everyone else is using Crucible. Both blades are pretty sharp and neither have 90 degree spines, so get out your file if you want to spark up or use your multi-tool, which, if we're going to be honest, it's probably more useful of a camp tool than a knife by itself. I know, sacrilegious. That and a lighter, of course. A man isn't a real man unless he uses a ferro rod and a piece of wood to create his fire with his knife. Why gather dry kindling when you can spend 45 minutes making your own out of a log? The handles. Hella makes a few full tang knives, neither of which are named the Harding or the GT. The tang on these two runs the full length of the handle. Both are small and tapered near the butt, meaning the handle is mostly wood, so as much as I hate to say it, not for batoning. Is there any other reason to own a fixed blade? I'm not really sure if there is. I'd almost argue that most people don't need fixed blade knives unless your main knife usage is field dressing game or batoning, but you know, whatever. The handles are nice and comfortable. Even the smaller Harding isn't too small. On the GT, you get a substantial aluminum bolster, which seems to be where the heaviest section of the knife is and the center of balance. The curly birch handle has a nice visual depth to it, so it works well if you just want to hold it in your hand and stare at it for extended periods of time in the comfort of your own home. The Harding handle is made of a few pieces of darkened oak on the ends with some stacked leather and curly birch in the center. 
I prefer the handle of the GT better because of the larger, more pronounced aluminum bolster. The sheaths, the sheaths are both made from nice leather, about the same quality and color, but with different retention systems. Overall, the GT, even though it's a larger knife, rides a tad lower, which I like more better. The both are in my preference of the butt of the handle being flush or below my belt line. The retention system on the Harding requires you to kind of jam the knife down inside, which is a tight fit, and it actually holds it pretty well there, and then snap over the top. The handle butt retainer sheath on this is overall a bit more work to sheath and unsheath, making it pretty secure even when the retainer isn't closed still. Personally, I prefer the GTs. The snap makes it as secure as the Harding, meaning it's not gonna fall out if it's snapped, and it's an easy snap and unsnap. It tends to rest inside the sheath, so it's also an easier pull. It does rattle a bit though when snapped, whereas the harding is tightly secured and doesn't rattle inside of its sheath. It's not a big deal, but might alert your prey if you've been out hunting wabbits. Comparisons, first both knives side by side like you've seen already in the video. Overall, I prefer the GT in handle size, looks, blade size, despite the sheath rattle. It's still a fairly lightweight knife for its size, and now like the product description says, it's a hunting knife. So this isn't a ferro rod ready or really a batoning knife. It's best for food prep, feather sticks, or game cleaning. If your fire prep tends to involve batoning, neither of these knives are suited for that. Just, oh, you know what? Never mind. Just bring a second fixed blade. Now the more cans ball. This is a lighter knife with a blade size between the GT and the Harding. I feel the handles on the Mora are a little more resilient to wax than the wood on the Hellas. If you're cheap and often abuse your knives, the good thing is the plastic handles are pretty robust and should still be in a landfill somewhere with the rest of your knife collection long after you're dead. The Mora blade stock is a bit thinner though. How about the Mora Companion? A $10 knife. It would make a good starter knife. It has a very comfortable handle. I do think the sheath kind of sucks though. Depending on your hand size, the unsheathing is awkward because the handle doesn't stick very far out of the sheath. It sits down in there, so whenever you do the pop thing, you don't really have much of your hand on the handle to, to do that with. You know, I have my SCs that I can pop, but since they have longer handles, it's a much easier. And since I'm an idiot, I want to hold the Mora sheath with my other hand, which is how I last cut myself with the Mora. Now the Spyderco Puko. Bet you didn't think I still had this. I forgot I did too. In theory, this is a nice, well-made knife. However, the handle is uncomfortable because of that hard peak on the grip of the handle. I think it's important before going into production they feel those sorts of things. It isn't comfortable to grip tightly and it's expensive. I only paid 60 bucks for mine so I didn't feel like I got ripped off for a knife I'll never use. Okay, one more, the Vangdahl Rover, the most steak knife looking of the knives here, maybe one of the best values if you're looking for a full tang knife. No frills, good sheath, and retention system. I like a slightly more pronounced finger guard on the front, but that's about it. However, since knives are vanity pieces nowadays and utility is often secondary to blade steel, looks, designers, deepness of the purple, Tamascus, sprint runs, brand names, you definitely shouldn't buy it. Yeah, I get all your kitchen knives are flat ground full tang with clip points. All right, are we done? Now I mentioned before that these are more suited for the food end of outdoors. The spines aren't great at striking steels. And you know, most of the wood I have in my yard is either too rotten or too wet to start fires. So what I did is I brought along my multi-tool and some dryer lint, which is an excellent fire starter combo. However, though, we do need at least to use the knife in the knife video, so we'll use some of these wood shavings that I'm making here and then throw them in the fire after I've started it. I'd best describe these knives as adult knives. You need to understand they're limited to things knives are designed for. Cutting things, taking pictures for your social media accounts, cleaning game, and not whacking it. Both are beautiful knives. Although if I were out camping, I'd probably just be an idiot and bring a fixed blade that I could beat up on. A small folding knife, probably an ax, a chopper, and uh, that would be all I'd need other than a log splitter. The good news is now I can add a beautiful GT to my collection for all those people who want to come over and... Oh, I, I'd love to look at your knife collection. Oh my, Oh my god, would you look at the time? I'm sorry, I have to go... My wife, I have to pick her and my kids up, and they're, they're calling right now, so... Um, if you like this sort of review and you like to look at my knife collection, subscribe to the channel. And a big thanks to the subscriber who loaned me the Harding. Donate to my Patreon if you feel like that's a good use of your money. Leave a comment. Featherstick that like button, even though that makes no sense. Thanks for watching.